I have great pleasure in welcoming the Premier of the State Council of the People's Republic of China, His Excellency Li Qiang. I invite him to address the General Assembly. Mr. President, I congratulate you. On your election as president of the 71st session of the UN General Assembly, I believe that under your presidency, this session of the General Assembly will make good progress on its agenda. I also appreciate the effective work of uh, Mr. Lukatoft as president of the last session of the UN General Assembly. I also want to pay, tri pay tribute to Secretary General Ban Ki-moon, who has, with modesty and a drive for harmony and inclusiveness, worked diligently and in a down-to-earth manner over the past decade, and whose work contributed significantly to world peace, sustainable development, and the advancement and protection of human rights in the world. Dear colleagues, the UN Sustainable Development Summit last year adopted the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development, which opened a new vision for global development. At the summit, Chinese President Xi Jinping gave a speech entitled Towards Win-Win Partnership for Sustainable Development. And right here, he expounded on China's principles and positions. And this year is the first year of uh, the implementation of that agenda. This year's general debate is the sustainable development goals, a universal push to transform our world cannot be more relevant. On behalf of the Chinese government, here I want to state that in advancing sustainable development agenda, China has taken actions. We are the first, one of the first, to submit to the United Nations the national plan on the implementation of the agenda. Sustainable development is um, first and foremost about development, and development underpins every human achievement. Without development, nothing can be sustainable. The lack of development is often at the root of uh, many of the world's problems, be it poverty, or the refugee crisis, war, conflicts, or terrorism. They all could be attributed to insufficient development. And none of them can be resolved properly without development. Only development can guarantee people's fundamental rights and interests. Only development can root out the causes for global challenges. And only development can advance human civilization and progress. Of course, development must be sustainable. It must be sustainable in all dimensions. Otherwise, development will be stalled, growth will be stalled, and held back. Development won't be sustainable if it is imbalanced, unequal, and widens the gap between the north and the south and the rich and the poor. Development won't be sustainable if it is extensive, driven by high consumption, high pollution, and high emissions, and depletes resources and strains the environment. Development won't be sustainable if economic growth and social progress are not well coordinated. Only when we keep a profound understanding of the implication of sustainability make all-round progress in poverty reduction, north-south and south-south cooperation, in climate change, and many other fronts, and promote equal sharing and green development, can we ensure that development will hold the ground and be sustainable? Sustainable development must be inclusive and interconnected. 
Currently, development, sustainable development endeavor is faced with great challenges. Regional conflicts and hotspots are incessant. Traditional and non-traditional security threats intertwine. And the environment for sustainable development gives no reason for optimism. World economic recovery remains lukewarm, economic globalization faces strong headwind, and the momentum for sustainable development is weak. And there's frequent occurrence of major infectious diseases and natural disasters. And there's the issue of energy and resource security, food security, and financial security become intertwined. And sustainable development faces an uphill battle. Difficult moments call for stronger confidence. Mankind has the wisdom and the ability to find a way out. For that to happen, there must be cooperation and a spirit of working together to tide over difficulties. It is time that the international community take on a new perspective, see itself as a community of shared future and interconnected interests, and make concerted efforts to tackle global challenges. Mr. President, colleagues, to advance sustainable development, we must keep both short-term and long-term interests in mind in making concrete efforts to tackle challenges and actively transform and change our world and to achieve our new vision. We are ready to and we must uphold the purposes and principles of the UN Charter. Without peace and stability, there will be no sustainable development. Even the fruits already earned risk being lost. The hard-won peace that has prevailed over the past 70 years or more testifies to the effectiveness of the international order and norms of international relations based on the UN Charter. These norms and order must be resolutely upheld. This serves the common interest of people of all countries and provides the most essential guarantee for achieving sustainable development. All countries need to observe the purposes and principles of the UN Charter, support the leading role of the UN and the Security Council in global affairs, support reforming and improving global governance mechanisms, to reflect the changes in international political and economic landscape. A new concept of common, comprehensive, cooperative and sustainable security should be nurtured and a global partnership established should be established that features dialogue instead of confrontation and partnership instead of alliance. We must pursue political solution to hotspot issues. Political solution is the fundamental way out. History has shown once and again that to repress violence with force can only lead to more hatred and warfare, from which no winner will emerge. Parties involved in conflicts must renounce the zero-sum mentality, settle disputes through dialogue, address differences through consultation, and seek reconciliation with tolerance. The mediation efforts of the international community must be fair and impartial. It should only facilitate the settlement of issues, not invite new problem, problems. On Syria, we must remain committed to political solution. The international community should encourage all relevant parties in Syria to end fighting at an early date and reach comprehensive political solution. On the Korean nuclear issue, we should remain committed to denuclearization of the Korean Peninsula, uphold peace and stability, on the Korean Peninsula and seek consultation and dialogue-based solutions so as to maintain international nuclear non-proliferation regime. Terrorism is the common enemy of mankind and must be combated resolutely. At the same time, double standards should not be applied and terrorism should not be linked with certain countries, races or religions. We must work together for the safe, steady recovery of the world economy. The world economy cannot afford long-term sluggishness as we see now. Otherwise, sustainable development will be fountain without origin. The current world economy is faced with both insufficient aggregate demand and prominent structural conflicts. We need to employ various kinds of effective policy instruments in a holistic manner and combine demand management with supply-side reform and short-term policies with long-term policies. 
We call on all countries to make concerted efforts to drive the global economy along a road of strong, sustainable, balanced, and inclusive growth. Given their significant influence, major economies need to conduct responsible policy making and coordinate macroeconomic policies. While considering their own growth, they also need to strive to reduce negative spillovers and refrain from adding to the weakness of global economic recovery. Economic globalization represented by trade and investment liberalization and facilitation has been an important driving force behind the fast global growth in past decades. Still, there exists no panacea in the world. Frankly, Globalization has taken its toll on some industries and communities of certain countries to a certain extent. Active measures need to be taken to address the problem, but it is always important to keep in mind the bigger picture instead of having our eyes on smaller factors only. Globalization is in line with the long-term and fundamental interests of all countries. Countries need to firmly oppose protectionism of all forms, firmly uphold the open trade regime represented by WTO, and promote the sustained and sound development of economic globalization with win-win and all-win cooperation. We must redouble efforts to address global challenges facing mankind. Greater attention and more support should be given to Africa and the LDCs to help them speed up industrialization, ensure food security, and eliminate poverty and hunger so that more people will lead a life of decency and dignity. More needs to be done to create an international environment Environment that helps reduce inequality and imbalance in global development. International institutions should spend their new resources on developing countries on a priority basis. Developed countries should make good on their ODA commitments. And developing countries need to pursue self-development and find paths suited to their national conditions. As we speak, the world is facing the largest ever refugee crisis since World War II. It is imperative to ensure access to basic living conditions by the refugees to stave off humanitarian crises. A more fundamental solution lies in rooting out the causes of warfare and renewed development so that source countries can be on a path toward enduring peace, development, and prosperity. Countries need to stay committed to common but differentiated responsibilities, equity, and respective capabilities. Jointly tackle climate change and work for the Paris Agreement to be accepted universally and take effect at an early date. Developed countries need to play a leading role, deliver on their emission promises, and emission reduction promises and help developing countries improve their capability on mitigation and adaptation. Mr. President, dear colleagues, since China adopted the reform and opening up policy, the Chinese economy has maintained rapid growth, becoming the world's second largest economy in 2010. In 2014, the Chinese economy reached the level of 10 trillion US dollars. In recent years, despite a greater basis of measurement for development, overall global complexity and long accumulated domestic underlying issues, China has relied on reform and innovation to maintain a medium-high growth rate and accelerated reform, transformation, and upgrading. In the first half of this year, the growth rate was 6.7%, among the fastest in major economies. And over 13 million urban jobs were added every year. In the first eight months of this year, Nine point five million new urban jobs were created. Every one percentage point of growth now equals several percentage points of growth before, and the yearly economic increment is tantamount to the economic aggregate of a middle-income country. Running China's own affairs well is the biggest contribution to the world, and China now still contributes around 30 percent to world economic growth. However, we are soberly minded that China remains a developing country, and there is still a long way to go before China achieves modernization. We should continue to give top priority to development 
and pursue comprehensive social and economic growth, maintain medium-high speed economic growth and move to the medium-high level of development. China will continue to promote development through dependent reform. Reform held the key to our previous achievements in development, and the same will be true for the future. We will promote development through expanding opening up. China's experience in the past decades has proven that a closed-door policy only leads to stagnation and backwardness, and opening up brings a development and prosperity. China will be firm in pursuing the win-win strategy of opening up. China will open its door even wider to the outside world. China will promote development through upholding peace. The prolonged war sufferings have made the Chinese people cherish peace even more. With a firm commitment to the peaceful path of uh, the path of peaceful development China will pursue friendship and cooperation with all countries on the basis of the five principles of peaceful coexistence we uphold mutual respect among all countries in, dis in disregard of the sites China also maintains that um, disputes concerning territory and maritime rights and interests should be resolved through dialogue and negotiation. We need to expand the common ground while shelving differences and make continuous contributions to regional peace and stability. China has all along worked for the peaceful settlement of hotspot issues and at the UN meetings this time, China has made it clear that uh, we will provide 300 million US dollars of humanitarian assistance to relevant countries and international organizations and also for other underdeveloped and the least developed countries China will continue to provide assistance on all fronts. China is a developing country with 1.3 billion population. We need to run our own affairs well, and at the same time, we need to undertake our new international responsibility. By the end of 2015, China had provided a total of over 400 billion RMB yuan to 166 countries and international and regional organizations, and provided training to over uh, 12 million talents in various sectors from other developing countries. Going forward, China will strengthen cooperation with other developing countries and do whatever is possible to help African countries and, and their LDCs. China will only increase its support and assistance to other countries as our economy grows. We stand ready to work with all countries to achieve common development and prosperity, to support sustainable development and international cooperation in relevant fields. China will increase its annual contributions to UN development agencies by 100 million US dollars by 2020 over the 2015 level. China is a country that honors its words with actions. We will translate our commitment into real actions. Mr. President, dear colleagues, it is our common task to achieve sustainable development, to transform and change our world, and to make the world a better place. It's the shared aspiration of all of us. China stands ready to work with the other members of the international community to build a world free from want and a world of development and dignity. Thank you.